This mini lecture is going to be talking about the role of ombudsman and in particular I'm going to focus in on the ombudsman of the City of Toronto. Ombudsman more generally we've talked about earlier in the class. We've talked about how you can have a neutral third party and whether or not they're actually neutral is something that you may need to consider. But we can talk about having a neutral third party whose role it is to try to help individual cases or, depending on whether the ombudsman has the purview, to look at system issues. Is this just a one-time thing or is this a systemic challenge? We've met previously Doug Melville, the Ombudsman for Banking Services and Investments, and Doug talked about the limits of his authority, and he also talked about the fact that there was a process in place. And this is quite common when it comes to the role of the ombudsman. I'm going to use the term ombudsman and ombudsperson interchangeably. Ombudsman is not actually a gendered term. It's a Swedish word, and it is actually gender neutral. But in Canada and around the world, we've seen some changes, like in British Columbia, where the ombudsman has become an ombudsperson. Again, I'll use these two terms interchangeably today. The important thing when you're looking at an ombudsman is to try to figure out actually how independent they really are. If you may find an ombudsperson or ombudsman in an embedded organization, they may be an employee of that organization. Let's talk about how we've uh, learned about the banks in particular. There may be an internal ombudsman to Bank X. Well, they're probably paid by the bank, and they're probably in that way also an employee of the bank. So their role probably is some type of customer service or customer satisfaction, but they're not entirely independent. By the time you get up to an organization like the Ombudsman for Banking Services and Investments, in that role, independent of the banks and not accountable in that way to them, much more independent. I'm going to use the example of the City of Toronto Ombudsman. Her name is Fiona Crean. She was appointed in November 2008 by the Toronto City Council, and it was as Toronto's very first ombudsman. Her office opened in April 2009. It's important to know that Fiona isn't actually a member of City Council. She's not in, doesn't report directly to the mayor. In fact, she's hired by all of the councillors and reports to them by uh, a special order. And as a result, she can't be fired in that way. Her position is a piece of uh, legislature. It's really important to know whether an ombudsman has that degree of independence, not just as an employee, but can they say things that are, by their nature, unpopular. Why are we talking about this in relation to older adults? Well, the City of Toronto Ombudsman is one example of how sometimes a neutral and free system can assist. It's important to know that when you make a complaint to an ombudsman, you're, you're going to probably actually need to do that in some type of a formal way, whether that's orally or in writing. It usually depends. Ombudsmen usually have a strong emphasis on fairness and accessibility. So complaining yourself or on behalf of somebody else is probably okay. And before you look at an ombudsman, you should make sure that you find out what their process is. You're going to need to give them some information. You're going to have to tell them who's involved, what the concern is. You're going to have to give them whatever evidence it is that you have, whether that's, again, secondhand evidence or your own. This isn't the kind of thing where you're looking at criminal beyond a reasonable doubt. You're just trying to give information. Usually, ombudsmen have some type of exemption from freedom of information. As an example, the Toronto City Ombudsman has a complete exemption from any of the freedom of information issues. She will neither confirm or deny that a complaint has been made, and she does not have to disclose her documents. And that's really important if you're trying to assure somebody that um, that is not going to come back on them. It's important to know that there are a lot of city services that particularly deal with older adults that do fall into the City of Toronto Ombudsman's purview. Again, I'm only using City of Toronto because we're based here and there is a City of Toronto Ombudsman. It may also be that there are other Ombuds people who have relation or intersection in our areas as well. 311 is a, uh, is a number that you can dial uh, to get a lot of City of Information services. That's an example of an area that you can have complaints. Really, particularly around older adults, it's important to know that there's also 
purview around long-term care homes and services, and that is an area that can be reviewed. There are also services around fire services or emergency medical services, EMS. There are areas around court services. Uh, if there's about prosecutions, it could be something in that area. There could be something around affordable housing. So it's important to make sure that you do have a look to see, you know, is the area that you're interested in covered by the ombudsperson? Important to know that there are some licensing standards and investigations as well. So if it's a licensing question, it, it may fall in the area. There can be policy planning, finance and administration, or public health. Again, those are areas that may uh, connect with the areas that you're trying to work in. Also importantly to know, if it's a City of Toronto service, the Shelter Support and Housing Administration is another area and it may be a housing question that you have. Uh, it may be to deal with, you know, cutting down trees. It may be to deal with transportation. Again, these are all areas of purview of the City of Toronto Ombudsman, if you're in the City of Toronto. Hospitals are not included. And it's really important to know. Indeed, there is a provincial ombudsman as well, and he also does not have purview for hospitals. There are, in some cases, ombuds folk for hospitals, but it's an exempted area in a lot of dispute resolution. Having said that, you recall that I said long-term care can be involved if it's under the purview. Why is it an ombudsperson important? It's important because they usually have a free way, and I'm saying free because you don't usually have to hire a lawyer or you don't have to... Um, try to get evidence on your own in some way. It's a free way to get investigation, both into an individual question, and it may have a broader systems. As a result, you may be able to fix an individual problem, and it also may draw attention to the problem at a high and systemic level. So you can really affect change. Usually working with ombuds offices is, well, I would say a pleasant experience to the degree of you know, when anyone's trying to figure out how to make a complaint, they usually respond back in about a week. And you can have a chance to uh, provide updates and information, etc., as things happen. If it becomes more urgent, you can usually tell them about that as well. Uh, they're trying to make sure that they have a broad view of respecting difference and accessibility, and they also include um, notions of equitable nature and inclusivity and participation. Again, it can be very helpful when you're dealing with an issue that is sensitive or may have a power imbalance. So you literally go to the website, which is ombudstoronto.ca, which I've posted on the blackboard, and it's quite easy to connect around issues with regards to seniors at the Ombudsman's office. Fiona Crean is well attuned to questions of consent capacity, mental health, addictions, and power imbalances in regards to services. And as a result, she's taken several investigations on older adult issues. In fact, in her new annual report, you will see that there are several sections talking particularly about seniors and older adults and rights. The City of Toronto Ombudsman is one example of a resource that you may have. We've also talked about the Ombudsman for Banking Services and Investment. There may be an opportunity for the Ontario Ombudsman as well, but it depends, again, on the purview. Overall, what's important to know is sometimes Ombudsman services can be very effective as long as the jurisdiction is theirs. If you're not sure, you can certainly ask, and they will certainly tell you either that they are the right person to deal with and they have a good referral list. So otherwise, if it can't be them, they can probably help you find who it is. Thanks.